Do you ever have thoughts that you do not like? Easy fix, right? Switch them off and replace them with ones that you do like. If only it was that easy. And I wondered about that all of my life. My name is Andrew Lawless. I am a best-selling author and certified high-performance coach. And I asked that question for so many years. Like, if I were in control of my own thoughts, why is it so difficult to switch them off, especially when I do not like them? Yes. And what I've learned is that that's not how our brains work. Because the human brain is made to help us survive. It is wired to detect any kind of change in our environment that can potentially harm us. And I'll give an example. If there was a lioness right here, a few meters away from me, behind the bush, that wanted to eat me, I would not be able to outfight or to outrun her because, you know, as a species, we are not the strongest and fastest animals on this planet. So what we rely on is our brain detecting anything that could potentially harm us early enough so that we do not get into these kind of situations in the first place. And therefore, our brain will always, always see the negative first, right? Because everything that's negative can potentially harm us. Question now is then, how do we switch this off? And yeah, because most of us do not have to worry about the lioness in the bush anymore. It's not there, right? Still, the brain is like like sending out radars to say what, you know, what can potentially harm us. And that's relationships, people, uh, objects, uh, situations, um, you name it, right? All of that gets flooded into our brain and these thoughts come up periodically because it's a good thing, right? It, they, they want to protect us from harm even though it's not there, right? Or even though it's perceived. But right? how often have you thought, you know, worried about something and you worried and worried and worried and it never happened, right? So it happens more often than not. So let's switch off uh, those negative thoughts. And here are three ideas how you can do that. First idea is interrupt. It's the most important thing you can do, right? So you have a negative thought. The moment you are conscious of that negative thought, switch it off. So one of my clients has a hairband, for example, here on, on her wrist. And every time she has a negative thought, she snaps it as a reminder that she needs to switch gears. But you can also just sit there and relax, right? And, and meditate and, and realize that you have a negative thought and that you would need to do something about it right now. Okay? So interrupting this thought is, the, is probably the most important thing that you can do. But I want you to take it further, right? Second idea, interpret that thought, right? So... Every negative thought, every thought that you have, or most thoughts that you have, bubble up from some kind of emotion. Uh, and negative emotions, you know, they come up because underneath them is some kind of fear, anger, hurt, disappointment. I mean, you name it, right? So, and you, you feel this, and then those negative thoughts come up. So fear, for example, um, you know, of, of the future or business or an opportunity or is, is so on is typically a signal that something is about to come that you need to prepare for. So your emotions are always a call to action. So if you like somebody, for example, if you're attracted to somebody, just walk over and introduce yourself. Yes. If you fear something, prepare yourself or get prepared for something that's about to come. If you're angry, for example, uh, and you have those thoughts, and I'm angry at so-and-so because I did this, this, and that, the key word here is because, right? Anger is a signal that an important rule that you have was violated, sometimes even by yourself, right? That's why people are angry at themselves, or they project that anger onto somebody else, right? So if you feel anger, for example, interpret as a call to action. Yeah, switch it off, switch that thought off. Say, you know what? I'm angry because my brain 
my mind, my subconscious, my gut, whatever you call it, wants me to take action. Which leads me to my third idea, which is like invite positive thoughts to uh, your mind. If you know you need to take action, here are the five questions that you can ask yourself. The first one is, what is good about this emotion or the situation that I'm worried about? First, like think through, what is good about this? Second is, you know, what can I learn from this situation right now that gives me this thought, right? Third is, what is not perfect yet? So something brings up this thought, right, that is not perfect. For example, we talked about anger and the rule that has been violated. So yeah, that's not perfect. That's this one person, this one group, this one client, or this one vendor, whoever it is, who violates a standard or rule that is important to me. Okay, that is not perfect. And, you know, here are the two or three things how they do this. Uh, and now you know, right? Fourth question is what am I willing to make it the way I want it, right? So uh, it, it lets, if you want to change somebody's behavior, how do you do that best? And there are also frameworks on how to persuade people uh, and win them over for their own cause. But there are also books and, and courses, so you can figure it out, right? But how can I uh, address the situation? What am, what am I willing to do? And then the fifth question is, what am I willing to not do? And that to me is even the more important question, right? Because that's typically the list of things that if you did those, you would have the need to change. And you didn't have the change and you keep on getting hurt and you keep on getting angry and you keep on getting being fearful because you didn't do these things. That's your area of change. 